A new patch of The Darkest Dungeon 2 just dropped, and I want to cover the patch notes, talk a little bit about it, and talk about my experiences. If you were watching on the live stream on Wednesday, you know that I did a full run all the way to the Seething Sigh and uh, took the new cultists to task. So let's talk a little bit more about it. Here's the intro that Red Hook gave us for M4. Join the denizens of this crumbling world and worship the yawning void. New avatars of the loathing demand your supplication. Hear the demonic piping of the herald. Prostrate yourself before the altar, but gaze not upon the high exemplar, for you are not worthy of such an honor. So, First of all, a bunch of UI fixes to talk about. Uh, there were some mouse over issues, some UI issues. The tempting goblet had uh, plus two stress until the next region, which didn't make a lot of sense. It's just as soon as you leave the templing, tempting goblet in, you get two stress. Uh, there were some token issues there with both the leper and throne daggers. Uh, the hero path seal change is actually quite nice. I noticed that when I was playing through. I don't know that I mentioned it, but uh, the hero path little badges that you get on the characters are now uh, a little more colorful and add a little bit of pop. Uh, but overall, mostly minor changes here. Uh, as for known issues that they are still working on, um, the timing issues around pull, push, and shuffle are noticeable. There's some like minor jank. They've smoothed out a lot of things, but I did notice that when I was playing. Uh, some combat text at start of combat, I believe, and then some camera st stutters when approaching nodes. One thing that's not covered here, but is very noticeable, when you're approaching nodes, there's this really beautiful like zoom in and then ease back out again. But, you know, lots of good UI changes. But the bulk of what we're here to talk about are the cultists, which uh, are going to be transformative to the way that we play the game and the way that we think about the game. So, uh, first of all, there is new art for the Guardian node. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, Low light cultist ambushes now include deacons and cardinals instead of only the standard cherubs and uh, katana ladies, <laughs> whose name I'm forgetting right now. Uh, reaching maximum loathing will now result in an exemplar fight. There was not a explicit maximum loathing bad thing that happened, so I think this is really cool. We will talk more about the exemplar. It is a flame-headed monstrosity that you don't want to mess with if you can avoid it, but you will be fighting a minimum of two throughout your runs. Uh, you can no longer retreat from guardian nodes. So this is part of a larger change that's covered in the next bullet point here, but basically guardian nodes, which are the final node in every region right before the inn, are now two cultist battles, and the second cultist battle is escalating. So in the first one, you fight a deacon, in the second one, you fight a cardinal, and in the third one, you fight an exemplar. Uh, one general thought or piece of feedback that I have on this is I think that biome one and two should be switched. I actually think that the cardinal is less scary than the deacon. When the cardinal goes bad, it goes really bad, but the deacon with its uh, damage resistance alternation is a real pain in the butt. And there's been a change to said uh, damage mitigation in the form of flesh warps that we'll talk about in just a second. The cultist fights in the mountain are also now deterministic. Uh, you will always face an exemplar and then a deacon and a cultist. And honestly, I'm not sure which of those is worse. Uh, but then finally, the deacon's flesh warps is now randomized. Previously, it was always melee resistance first, range resistance second, which was really nice because, among other things, it lined up nicely with a frontline highwayman opening with point-blank shot. Uh, it's sad to see that go, but, you know, I think it's, uh, it's good to have to be a little more prepared when you're thinking about the way you're going to enter that fight rather than just being like, I can always do this. I always know that my ranged attackers will go first, etc. And then finally, and this, this change was so welcome, uh, all worship skills are now considered free actions. This means they no longer occur automatically at the start of the round. 
thank goodness. That was the most annoying thing is when you had a cherub that had lethal dot damage on it and it got a free action at the start of the turn, it did its heal and then it died. Uh, they occur as part of the cultist turn, so they are subject to stun and dot, right? You can now stun to get around them, thank goodness. And if you kill the thing with dot damage, it will no longer uh, heal or do whatever its worship action is. Uh, they do not end the cultist turn on use, which is, that's why they're free actions, obviously. And then more than one cultist can now worship on the same round. Uh, previously, they would kind of alternate, which I think this might strangely enough be better because you're not going to get into a situation where there's kind of like a deacon and two cherubs and they're kind of alternating worship every other turn now they'll both worship at the same time but we'll have to wait and see but anyways uh i'm kind of hiding behind it here but uh this is the new uh hangout this is the guardian node uh looks fantastic has this kind of tentacled temply type of vibe to it uh really love it but let's talk about the new cultists so first up, we have the Herald, and it took me a second to understand exactly what's going on here, but he is like a creepy uh, built-in bagpipe player. <laughs> so some like nodule of his flesh hangs down and apparently he plays it like a bagpipe. And the Herald is a ranged stress dealer. Uh, if you watch the, the run that I put up, Previously, we ran into, I don't know, maybe six of these. They're pretty commonly seen, and they love spamming Clarion Call, which is that second ability, which at the time of me playing was a guaranteed three stress every time. And if you had two of these Heralds and you couldn't get one down, it was Meltdown City. Uh, also, Clarion Call is like their bread and butter. I never saw them do First Trumpet, and I only saw them do Inversion once. First Trumpet is a dot, is a dot, bleed, and fire with worship stacks being gained where everything is generating worship. Inversion is just kind of like a move back and add a buff. I don't remember what the buff did. I'd have to go back and check that. Uh, and then Harmonious End, I don't know how much stress that is because I also didn't see it. And then the worship of the Herald is regen and imparting a worship on whatever it is worshiping. That's pretty, pretty standard. But these guys are going to be the new, probably biggest problem in a lot of runs, if I'm being honest. They're not, at least in my experience, a huge damage dealer, but their stress is off the charts and around the corner. There was a hot fix that reduced Clarion Call to be two to three. We'll talk about it at the end that at the end of this video when we talk about hotfix changes, but these guys are nasty. They're relatively low hit points. They're basically your first kill target consistently. Then we have the altar. Uh, so the altar is a sacrificial altar. Uh, got some melty candles and it's some type of cre creepy tentacled footstool. Uh, much like the sacrificial, it has... Um, a zoic end, which if it is the last thing remaining on the battlefield, it will blow up and do a bunch of stress damage and regular damage. I have not let it go off. I was close one time and then just didn't. Uh, it is primarily a buffing agent. So Altar of Denial and Altar of Resentment are different buffs depending on which chapter you are. So I think long term, every chapter is going to have its own unique buff. Uh, and then it also has uh, bone weaving and flesh weaving, both of which are buffs that also include worship. So it's either imparting regen in the flesh case or defense and strength in the bone case. But these guys are relatively low hit points. They're probably like a second tier target. They need to die before the end, but a lot like the sacrificial, they're probably not worth focus firing and you can take a little bit of time to deal with them. But that brings us to the main event, uh, and in real life, it's a lot larger than this, <laughs> but the exemplar is the new big bad. It is a three-slot nasty dude, uh, or lady, and it just wreaks absolute havoc. Uh, first of all, it, uh, it, when things get enough worship, it does Pillar of Sacrifice where it eats them. Uh, it also has like 150 HP, I want to say. I'd have to go back and check that. But it has a lot of HP, so it, you're going to have to put some serious time in. Uh, it reposts for, I want to say, 15 to 17 damage. Pretty substantial. 
Uh, I believe when it hits its worship tokens, it does Rapturous Beauty as its like big AoE stress add vulnerable attack. Uh, it hits like an absolute train uh, with like Exaltation being able to crit into like the 40s, I want to say I saw. Uh, and Prelude is also hitting pretty hard with a pull and a combo. One thing that I do not know, I don't think I saw it use Fall, and I wish that Red Hook had a way to communicate skills that can only be used on comboed targets, because I believe the reason that it is applying combo is because it also sometimes consumes combo, potentially with the Fall, which is another stress-based attack. But this enemy is going to be more about the damage and less about the stress, at least in my experience. Now, the other big mechanic that you have to face when dealing with the uh, Exemplar is that anything that reaches Max Worship, Pillar of Sacrifice consumes them, right? So it kills them, puts a large regen and then a reasonably large repost on the Exemplar. But in addition to that, it backfills. <laughs> So just because it ate a cherub or a cultist or a herald or an altar, it doesn't mean that you're in the clear because it's just going to summon another one. So for the most part, you have to ignore whatever the add is, the one additional enemy that comes in a slot with this thing, and you have to just go go after this with everything you got. The Exemplar is tough. It's going to be one of the new defining enemies. It is not as hard, in my opinion, as the Leviathan, and it really doubles down on reinforcing with me the importance of smoke bombs. If you watch my most recent run, uh, you will see that I got a lot of blinds off successfully on the Exemplar and got pretty lucky with a lot of misses from those blinds. Uh, without those we would have been in pretty rough shape. But anyways, on to some gameplay changes. Uh, updated how combat items and free actions affect turns. Uh, basically, the idea here is that Red Hook now has the ability to see if the thing that you are doing is a turn-ending thing or a not turn-ending thing, and certain triggers only happen on turn-ending events. One thing that I was worried about when I saw this was that maybe this would remove the ability to use a consumable in order to reset a blocked action from, say, Amorous or Inseparable or Envious, right? Sometimes one of your heroes will block another hero from moving or healing or stress healing. And I was worried that this would change the way that that worked, and then maybe those blockages would only reset on turn end. That may still be coming. As far as I could see, it did not happen in this patch, though. Uh, Cultist encounter rewards were changed so that over the two fights, you get the same amount of stuff from the Guardians that you previously got from the three fights. Uh, as a reminder, you can no longer retreat from those fights, so you're going to be fighting more cultists, and you're going to be guaranteed to get four cultist trinkets on a successful run, which I think is interesting. Uh, previously, it was more of like a you-make-a-decision risk versus reward. Now it's like a do-or-die type of thing. Uh, the Unsettling Portrait Cosmic Encounter uh, no longer gives generic trinkets. This apparently goes for all academic study changes. Uh, dark Impulses now have effects, and they're some of them are pretty good. Uh, we got a Move Resist one, uh, a Healing one, a Stun Resist one, and a Bleed Resist one, I think. And basically, they're like moderate buffs, and most of them seem to come with a a stress trigger. So for instance, if you get the bleed resist and then you get a bleed, you will get one stress for getting the bleed. Or if you get the move resistance one, if you get moved, you will get one stress. So they have a little bit of an upside, a little bit of a downside, makes it a bit more palatable using a, uh, a cultist trinket because you get that little bit of extra customization. And you're going to be getting a lot more dark impulses because you really can't avoid uh, running into cultists anymore. Uh, the uncommon seashell was apparently broken. Uh, I hadn't noticed that, but uh, it's a trinket that I don't see a huge amount of value out of. I think it's it's okay. The intimidate providing, I think it's vulnerable now, is, is nice. Uh, 
food wasn't healing. I didn't run into that. Uh, and then the way that this is, this last one is an interesting one that uh, I didn't realize was a problem, but uh, certain tokens cancel each other out. So if a vulnerable token will cancel out a block token, and previously, sometimes conversion, there's certain trinkets that create conversions, like convert vulnerable to defense. The order of operations would cause you to gain the defense, and the defense would cancel out with vulnerable. Obviously not the way it was meant to work, uh, so this is a buff to those conversion trinkets. Uh, Runaway Searing Strike Dot was not being buffed by trinkets, so that's a nice improvement. Uh, driving looks a little better, and apparently the light from the lantern at the inn is now inside of the lantern, not below it. So good news, that will probably prevent some fires in the darkest dungeon environment. Maybe the sprawl will completely disappear, who knows. Okay, so... The version of the patch notes that I just went through was the original patch, the one that I played through on Wednesday. There has been a hotfix since. This is hotfix 36318. And uh, we'll just quickly go through this because, you know, for completeness, this is the latest version. Uh, some improvements to combat start pop text. Uh, movement has been improved and smoothed out a little bit. Uh, UI wasn't refreshing correctly after item use, uh, fixed an issue with immobilization tokens not working properly, didn't run into that one, uh, some bookkeeping around road events, fixed some minor issues with combat indicators not appearing correctly, and then uh, kill effects weren't always working with hit effects. This was one that I, I'm going to have to wait and see, but hit effects not working on killed units could be a reason why you never see a stress heal for a crit that ends combat. Because a crit that end co ends combat, presumably it is the crit hit that generates the stress heal, and if it is a kill also, the hit trigger might not have functioned. So this might fix that. We'll find out on Wednesday. Uh, shameless plug, if you want to watch some Darkest Dungeon on Wednesday, I will be streaming it from 1 to 6 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, Dreaming General, there were some issues with the taproot. We fought the Dreaming General once or maybe even twice on our run, and I didn't notice anything major with the taproot, but it seems like there was some action queuing issues, and then also if you used a combat item and then also hit the taproot, maybe you didn't get two triggers with the most recent patch. Unclear. Uh, as for the cultists, the, the new edition, there was an issue with the cultists alter altar of x resentment or denial whatever it happens to be being incorrect incorrectly re removed uh from a cultist uh when the altar dies i don't think i noticed that but uh it wouldn't surprise me the one thing that i think darkest dungeon 2 needs to still work on a bit is buffs are sometimes hard to intuit because they're only trapped in that little diamond shaped tooltip basically so i i probably just didn't notice uh, the cultist altar no longer targets corpses. That's something we definitely benefited from. Not only did it target corpses, it targeted corpses aggressively. <laughs> um, uh, uh, the cultist heralds uh, clarion call now deals two to three stress damage instead of three. Um, minor nerf, this is still brutal. Three stress is just a ton to take. Uh, matches containing three or more heralds have been removed. Uh, I did not run into three heralds, but uh, if I did, I probably would have been crying because that's pr that would have been pretty brutal. That's potentially, you know, if they move relatively quickly, like nine stress damage coming in before you have a lot of chance to do anything. Uh, some mashes containing two heralds have been adjusted. We definitely ran into some two herald mashes, none that were particularly brutal. Uh, updated the academics camera for the exemplar herald and cultist. That's the middle click or holding alt when mousing over one of them. And then cleaned up the presentation timing on the new free actions version of worship. Uh, thank you, uh, police, for whatever you're doing. And that right there is uh is the new update and hotfix uh pretty excited to play this again on wednesday like i said we had a spoiler alert successful run 
on Wednesday that you can check out. I'll link it down below in the description. Uh, it's coming out episodically as this video is going live, but it's also available as the full live stream VOD. Uh, if you're interested in talking about Darkest Dungeon 2, we have a Discord also linked below uh, where you can hop in and share your experiences, your strategies, etc. Or I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Uh, but other than that, thank you for watching. If you like this kind of stuff and you want to see me keep doing it, uh, hit me with a like and maybe even a subscription, and I hope to hear from you in the comments or see you around. But for now, that's it for me. Have a good one.